Driven by the voracious interest to investigate the insider facts of the universe, humankind has left on an excursion that resists the limits of time, chasing replies to the inquiries that torment the texture of reality. Surprisingly, the James Webb Space Telescope, with its penetrating eye, has quite recently caught a brief look at a vast structure that goes before the introduction of stars, the heavenly abnormality that shows up to be more established than the actual universe. You may be considering how a design can be more established than our universe. Is the huge theory of how things came to be defective? Join us as we investigate how the James Webb Telescope just identified a 13.8 billion-year-old structure and its sweeping implications. Envision looking at the massive grandiose domain where stars and worlds play out a stunning dance of light and gravity, uncovering the insider facts of the past and the future. This is what the James Webb Space Telescope, a breathtaking space test, practices regularly, catching and sending its stunning perceptions to Earth. As of late, it has uncovered a brain-resisting display, a 13.8 billion-year-old heavenly structure that resists the very underpinnings of our inestimable appreciation. Through this striking mechanical wonder, we are confronted with a significant inestimable secret, a secret that is complicatedly woven into the very texture of space itself. This stunning disclosure has lighted a tempest of discussions and clarifications within the logical community as they attempt to unwind the mystery of this old construction. Prestigious researchers and striking observatories all over the planet are continually rippled with questions about this baffling peculiarity. The generally famous among these inquiries is, how might the James Webb Telescope recognize a structure that is more seasoned than the universe itself? To address this inquiry, we want to initially focus in on this structure. It's not a system, a cloud, or a dark opening. It is a star, an extremely old and exceptionally extraordinary star. It is situated over 200 light years away, close to the constellation Libra. It is called HD 140283. However, it has a rather fitting name, the Methuselah Star, after the scriptural figure who lived for a long time. This star is not just antiquated but also quick. It zooms through space at a speed of something more than 800,000 kilometers per hour, uncovering its sensational history some time back when the forerunner of our Milky Way galaxy gobbled up a midget universe, which was its original home. Anyway, what makes the Methuselah star genuinely interesting isn't its speed, but its age. It is quite possibly one of the most established heavenly objects we have at any point noticed, and its age makes no sense. As indicated by the underlying assessments, the star was around 16 billion years old, Yet the most late gauge is 14.46 billion years, with a vulnerability of 0.8 billion years. This figure represents a riddle because the age of the universe, determined from perceptions of the inestimable microwave background, is around 13.8 billion years. How can a star be more seasoned than the universe itself? It appears to be incomprehensible. This mystery prompted inquiries about the star's age, the universe's age, or the exactness of dating strategies. Could the star be a remnant of a past universe? Might the universe at some point be more established than we think? Might our dating techniques at any point be imperfect? We should investigate these possibilities further. First, we really need to grasp that estimating the period of divine items is an overwhelming errand. Stars like our sun keep up with their brilliance, temperature, and size for billions of years, making age assessment troublesome. Stargazers depend on unobtrusive changes in splendor and variety over time and look at these estimations to numerical models that anticipate how stars change with age. One key mark of a star's age is its turn rate. Over time, stars slow down their turning like a wheel dialing back due to grinding. By contrasting the twist paces of stars at various ages, space experts have laid out numerical connections to gauge their ages, a technique known as gyrochronology. One more sign of a star's age is its attractive movement. Attractive activity, like flares and explosions of energy on a star's surface, declines as a star progresses in years. Space experts have created advanced methods, for example, astroseismology, to concentrate on vibrations on a star's surface brought about by waves voyaging through its inside. These vibrations change with a star's age, assisting with estimating its age more precisely. For example, utilizing the strategy, 
space experts have assessed the Sun's age to be roughly 4.58 billion years. Getting back to the Methuselah star, cosmologists assign such an old age to it by considering the populace of stars it has a place with. Stars in the universe can be arranged by how much weighty components or metals they contain. Our Sun is a populous I star with a lot of weighty components. In contrast, the Methuselah star is a populous II star with fewer weighty components, especially iron. This implies that the star was brought into the world before most of the weighty components were made in the universe, which occurred in the blasts of enormous stars called supernovae. There is likewise a speculative class of stars called populous III stars, which are accepted to have for all intents and purposes no weighty components at all. These stars are thought to be the initial ones that shaped in the early universe soon after the Big Bang. They were incredibly huge and hot and consumed their fuel quickly, turning hydrogen and helium into heavier components. When they passed on, they detonated as supernovae, dispersing a portion of these components into the encompassing space. Populous two stars rose up out of the gas mists that were somewhat debased by these components while populous I stars began from the gas mists that were further enriched by ensuing supernovae. The presence of the Methuselah star suggests a confounding conversation starter. How might it be more seasoned than the actual universe? The answer isn't simple, as it involves a part of vulnerability and suppositions based on the estimations from the Hubble Space Telescope. There is a 70% likelihood that the Methuselah star's age goes from 13.66 billion to 14.46 billion years with a 15% opportunity that it is significantly more seasoned. Considering all the variables, there is basically a 20% plausibility that the star's real age is more youthful than the universe's age. This resembles rolling a standard six-sided die and getting a six, which isn't very logical. However, this likewise expects that there are no different wellsprings of mistake or predisposition in the age assessment. In any case, it is irrefutable that the Methuselah star is amazingly old. In fact, it is the most established star in the universe with a sensibly precise age assurance. Instead of contemplating whether it very well may be multiple billion years more established than its climate, we can move toward the issue from an alternate point. Might it at some point be that the universe isn't generally so youthful as researchers at first thought? Actually, it is difficult to get a handle on the immensity of 13.8 billion years. Assuming we pack the whole history of the universe into a grandiose schedule with the Big Bang as the most stunning New Year's firecrackers, Earth wouldn't appear until late December. Recorded mankind's set of experiences would just range the most recent 10 seconds of December 31st. Researchers determined the age of the universe by noticing the light from stars that were conceived only a couple hundred million years after the Big Bang. As the universe grows, it extends this old light, making it redder. This is called redshift. By estimating both the distance and redshift of these stars, researchers can construe the age of the universe. Anyway, ongoing discoveries from researchers at the University of Ottawa suggest that the universe may be a lot more seasoned. They proposed that it very well may be around 26.7 billion years of age. Renata Gupta, a material science teacher at the University of Ottawa, raises an old hypothesis from Swiss cosmologist Fritz Zwicky, tracing all the way back to 1929. This hypothesis claims that photons lose energy as they traverse tremendous distances in time. This goes against the noticeable redshift information, yet Gupta contends that by tolerating this hypothesis alongside the extending universe, we can see redshift as a blended peculiarity that isn't only brought about by development. Expanding the universe's age could reveal insight into some well-established cosmological riddles, as well as a few new ones raised by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. Gupta arrives at the age of 26.7 billion years by consolidating the drained light hypothesis with advancing coupling constants first recommended by hypothetical physicist Paul Dirac, which implies that molecule communications might have differed over time. Noticing that scientists have changed their assessments of the universe's age before, for instance, in the 1920s Edwin Hubble thought the universe was just 2 billion years old, our techniques have become more precise over time. Multiplying the universe's age is a gigantic leap. It remains indistinct whether cosmologists will change their perspectives on the universe's age based on Gupta's work. However, regardless if mankind's written history is equivalent to only 10 or 5 seconds in the grand scope of the universe, one thing is sure, the universe is an old and heavenly spot. Shifting our concentration from the age of the universe 
there are a few entrancing perceptions about the Milky Way. Late estimations show stars at the edge of our world are moving a lot more slowly than stars in comparative areas in different cosmic systems. There are barely any potential explanations behind this peck. Ulyarity. One is that our system might have a very low measure of dull matter, which is the imperceptible substance that influences the gravitational design of infinite objects. Another chance is that our information on dull matter, including how much there is in the universe, might be totally off base. This secret stems from information gathered by the European Space Agency's Gaia satellite, which provides definite data about the paces and places of almost 2 billion stars in the Milky Way. These exact estimations have made stargazers reconsider what they are familiar with dark matter and its relationship with the universe. In the huge territory of the universe, dark matter remains quite possibly one of the most fascinating and subtle secrets standing up to present-day astronomy. Dissimilar to common matter, which makes up stars, planets, and everything apparent in the universe, dark matter is undetectable and doesn't collaborate with electromagnetic radiation. Its presence is construed from gravitational consequences for noticeable matter and the astronomical microwave background, suggesting that it is around 27% of the universe's complete mass energy content. The idea of dark matter was first proposed by space expert Fritz Zwicky during the 1930s, who saw that systems in the coma cluster were moving so quickly that they ought to fly separated if by some stroke of good fortune noticeable matter were holding them together. Zwicky estimated the presence of inconspicuous Dunkel Materi, German for dark matter, to make sense of this gravitational peculiarity. Many years after the fact, additional proof supporting dark matter's presence came from investigations of cosmic system pivot bends, gravitational lensing, and the large-scale structure of the universe. One of the most convincing bits of proof for dark matter comes from perceptions of the cosmic microwave background, CMB radiation, which is the extra shine from the Big Bang. Little changes in the CMB give experiences into the universe's initial conditions and the dissemination of matter. By concentrating on these vacillations, researchers can gauge how much dark matter is present in the universe and its distribution on large scales. The dark matter wind hypothesis comprises of non-ionic particles, meaning they are not comprised of protons and neutrons like standard matter. A few applicant particles have been proposed, counting feebly interacting massive particles. WIMPs, axions, and sterile neutrinos. WIMPs specifically are well known because they normally emerge in numerous speculations past the standard model of molecule material science and could possibly make sense of dark matter's notice properties. Endeavors to identify dark matter particles straightforwardly have been progressing for quite a long time. Tests like the Cryogenic Dark Matter Search, CDMS, Super CDMS, and xenon aim to catch communications between dark matter particles and standard matter utilizing ultra-sensitive locators covered deep underground to protect from astronomical rays. These tests have set severe limits on the properties of dark matter particles, but have yet to decisively identify them. On the other hand, backhanded recognition techniques look for the results of dark matter obliteration or decay, for example, gamma rays, neutrinos, or cosmic rays. Observatories like the Fermilab Gamma-ray Space Telescope and the High Energy Water Cherenkov Observatory are effectively looking for these signs from areas of high dark matter density, like the centers of systems or galaxy clusters. In spite of broad endeavors, the nature of dark matter remains slippery. Its properties, like mass and communication strength, continue to be subjects of extraordinary exploration and discussion. The quest for dark matter isn't just about understanding the universe's composition, but additionally about testing major physical science speculations past the standard model and shedding light on the grandiose construction arrangement. With regards to grandiose construction development, dark matter plays a pivotal role. As per the common lambda cold dark matter, lambda CDM, model, dark matter structures the platform upon which systems and galaxy clusters gather throughout inestimable time. Initially, small quantum vacillations in the early universe developed, affected by dark matter's gravitational force, ultimately framing the tremendous astronomical snare of universes we notice today. Reproductions in view of the Lambda-CDM model give point-by-point -point forecasts of how systems and galaxy bunches structure and develop more than billions of years. These recreations match observational information surprisingly well, supporting the thought that dark matter is an essential part of the infinite web structure. Besides, 
dark matter's impact reaches out past worlds. It influences the elements of galaxy clusters, gravitational lensing of far-off objects, and, surprisingly, the large-scale circulation of systems in the universe. By considering these impacts, space experts can gather dark matter's appropriation and properties on large scales, providing basic bits of knowledge into its role in shaping the universe's development. Late headways in observational methods have permitted stargazers to plan dark matter's distribution with remarkable detail. Gravitational lensing, for instance, utilizes the twisting of light by huge items like galaxy clusters to indirectly plan dark matter's gravitational field. The Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based observatories have led profound overviews to concentrate on these lensing impacts, uncovering unpredictable examples of dark matter around universes and galaxy groups. Notwithstanding gravitational lensing, universe surveys provide another amazing asset for planning dark matter. By estimating the movements of universes inside clusters and their spatial circulation, stargazers can construe the gravitational impact of dark matter. Surveys like the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, SDSS, and the Dark Energy Survey, DES, have planned a huge number of cosmic systems across the universe, uncovering the vast networks and filamentary structure overwhelmed by dark matter. Moreover, Continuous and future observatories vow to extend our comprehension of dark matter's properties and distribution. The impending Vera C. Rubin Observatory, previously LSST, will lead a very long-term survey of the whole southern sky, capturing exceptionally profound and wide-field pictures to concentrate on dark matter and its impacts on vast construction arrangement. Past observational cosmology, Hypothetical physicists proceed to investigate elective hypotheses of gravity and altered types of dark matter. Modified Newtonian Dynamics, MOND, proposes that gravity acts contrastingly on large scales than anticipated by general relativity, potentially explaining the noticed dynamics of universes without invoking dark matter. Much the same way, speculations like altered gravity, MOG, and scalar field dark matter, SFDM, propose elective clarifications for dark matter's gravitational impacts. SFDM recommends that dark matter comprises ultralight scalar fields that consolidate into a Bose-Einstein condensate, displaying wave-like properties on vast scales. While these alternative hypotheses remain theoretical, they highlight the intricacies and vulnerabilities encompassing dark matter's nature and role in the universe. Resolving these inquiries will require a blend of creative observational procedures hypothetical progressions, and interdisciplinary joint efforts across astronomy, particle physics, and cosmology. In summary, dark matter stands as one of the most significant secrets in current science, testing our comprehension of the universe's organization, design, and advancement. Its presence significantly impacts infinite construction arrangement, gravitational dynamics, and the destiny of worlds over billions of years. As observational abilities and hypothetical models continue to advance, the journey to unwind dark matter secrets remains at the very front of astrophysical exploration, promising significant experiences into the central nature of our universe.